let's, let's iron out a few in, you know, things that are incorrect about prayer. Prayer coming from your brain is useless. That's why it doesn't work for most people because, uh, you know, when you're doing a rosary without any heart, if you're doing some kind of, you know, praying six times a day to the east without any heart, has no benefit to you or to anybody else around you whatsoever. Right? Prayer coming from the mind of your spirit body is useless. I want to illustrate to you the practical reasons why those two things are useless. And there's very scientific reasons, actually, why those particular things are useless. There's a lot of good scientific reasons. One, thoughts are created by your own brain. And those thoughts come from your soul, but uh, that trigger thoughts generally. But thoughts only that do not come from your soul are just coming from your own brain or somebody else's brain. They are your creations, not God's. Do you understand? Now, you're allowed to create. God created you to create. But they are your creations. The second thing is thoughts cannot exit the universe. So while it is possible for people inside of the universe to catch your thoughts, in other words... Telepathic response to your thoughts is possible. God will not receive your thoughts. Because God exists outside of the universe. Your thoughts are a substance of your own creation and require the same substance to exist in order to be transmitted. And as a result of that, they require substances that exist in the physical universe in order to be transmitted from one person to another. As a result, it is impossible for thoughts to exit the universe. Do you understand? Is that getting a bit too scientific for you? Yeah? It's like trying to send an email to someone who doesn't have a network. <laughs> right? So while God can see your thoughts, because God can peer into the universe and see anything, God will not receive your thoughts into God's soul. Because it's impossible for your thought to exit the universe and enter God's soul. There's only one thing that God created that enables you to communicate with God, and that is your soul. And your soul is made up of substances that, when transmitted, are able to exit the universe and enter God. Do you understand? And these substances all revolve around your passions, desires, longings and emotions, which are not constrained by the universe because they come from a soul that was created by God in the same substance. That's why we often refer to as the image of the creator, right? So our soul is created in the image of the creator and as such, we have the ability to transmit to our creator feelings from our soul. Thoughts even from our soul, but they're not structured in the way that our intellectual thoughts are structured. So no amount of intellectual prayer will actually be heard by God. What has to be engaged is this thing, the soul. That has to be engaged. Your feelings, your longings, your desires, your passions, these are the things that need to be engaged in order to pray. Now, Prayer, where these things are engaged, is always effective. In other words, God always receives it under one condition. There's only one condition. And that is, if... And I write if <laughs> like this. Because everyone ignores the if. Right? If our... Longing is in harmony with God's longing. So it's a big if, right? If our longing is in harmony with God's longing, 
every longing we have directed towards God will be satisfied. Now, once you really have faith in that, it's really interesting how much your life can change. Right? But most of us have no faith in that at all. Most of the time, because we experience or try to experience our longings directed towards God, and you know what ends up happening? Our longings are tainted, and so they are not in harmony with God's longing. And then we say, oh, we never got anything. And of course you're not going to get anything, because your longing was not in harmony with God's longing. Does that make sense? If your longing is in harmony with God's longing, every single time you have a longing directed towards God, it will be satisfied. Every single time. So if you have a longing to receive God's love inside of your soul, do you think that longing would be in harmony with God's longing? Of course. So you will receive God's love every single time. And the only time you won't is if your longing was not in harmony with God's love. It wasn't sincere or it wasn't pure. That's the only time. Now, when people you listen to that, they go, but, but I often pray and I don't receive God's love. And I'm saying, yeah, that's right. Spot on. Because your longing isn't in harmony with God's. You think you're praying and something's, not, something's impure about it. That's what's going on. And for the majority of people, you know what's really going on? The majority of people have these holes within themselves. Let's give it like a great big hole. That's full of pain, like we illustrated yesterday. And you know what we want from God? Our pain gets so big. And you know what we want? We want God to make it go away. And so you know what we do? Under those conditions, we long for God's love to enter us and make our pain go away. Now, is that a pure longing? Who created this pain? Did God create it? No. Somebody else or we ourselves through our choices created it. So God can't make our pain go away. God will expose our pain so that we can feel it and then it will go away. But God's not going to make it go away. Right? Too many people believe that God will make their pain go away. It's not going to ever happen because we or others around us created this pain. We need to help it have it go away. We need to have it go away by experiencing it rather than holding on to it. It's only in us because we're holding on to it. Now, because we do that most of the time when we're longing to God, you know, we have some crisis in our life and so we long to God, we're really wanting God to make our pain go away. And of course, our prayers may not be answered because it's not in harmony with God's longing. God wants you to deal with your pain. God wants you to see the reasons how it got created. God wants you to feel how it got created so that you never create it again. If God just rubbed it out every time like this, you'd just go ahead and create it again if you don't know how it got there. You need to know how it got there. Right? You need to feel it and experience it in order to know. So God's not going to rub out your pain just because you want it. 